Hey everyone, this is Brett with Wolves Across the Pond and today I wanted to do something a little different. So being a Wolves fan in the US has been a really interesting experience. It's been a blast, but it has been very interesting. And I've noticed several funny kind of quirks about being a fan in the US. So this video is gonna be my top five funny things about being a Wolves fan here in the United States. So let's get into it. All right, so this is gonna be in countdown format. So I'm gonna start with five, work my way down to number one, which is the funniest thing about being a Wolves fan in the US. So stick around for number one. But number five is the questions. And so what's really funny about um, the US is there's not a lot of football or soccer, as we call it here, fans. Um, it's a growing sport for sure, but it's not the most popular sport. And the most popular sport is American football and then probably closely followed by basketball. Um, but football is, um, as people in the UK know it, football um, is growing in popularity um, all the time. And, but because of that, because it is still kind of this growing thing in the US, a lot of people still don't know the teams. And when they do know the teams, they'll know one of like the big six. And so when they see the Wolves logo, most people just don't even know what it is. And the people that do know what it is are usually very confused. <laughs> They're like, why in the world are you supporting Wolves? Because, you know, you, if you see a fan here, it's it's one of the obvious, like, oh, I support Man City or Man United or something like that. So when they see I'm a Wolves fan, they're like, huh. And it, it's kind of funny because I kind of get this kind of like, the, the first response is why, and that's kind of strange. And then the second response is a little bit of respect because it's like, oh, okay, like, you're not just making the easy choice and following like Man City or someone. You're actually like going into a team that, you know, there's some ups and downs too. And it's, it's kind of a more nuanced team to choose. So yeah, I get a lot of questions about it, about, you know, the why, how did you become a fan? And so yeah, it, it's been kind of funny to see people's reactions. All right, funny thing number four is the time difference. And I mean, th this is gonna be something for any fan in the US. There's a big time difference between um, the UK and the US, of course. Um, but it has kind of led to some funny things. So when I first became a Wolves fan, I was actually living all the way in Utah, far west of, of the United States, mountain time zone. So there was a seven hour difference between my time and um, the time in the UK. I have since moved to Indiana, which is about 1500 miles. And so now I'm two time zones closer to the UK. And so now it's only a five hour difference and th which is way better because like if you guys have like an earlier game over there, I used to have to wake up at like 5 a.m. in order to watch it. But now it's like, oh, okay, I, I, I'm not watching the game until at least like eight or 10 my time. And so, um, but there's actually kind of a funny side effect to that. Because of that, when I'm watching a match live, usually I'm a good like 30 to 40 seconds behind. And I have a lot of like Twitter notifications set up on my phone, so like, if there's a promising drive moving up the field and I'm not getting any, any Twitter notifications, it's it's like, oh, I guess this one won't be successful because if they were going to score, I'm usually notified on Twitter before I can actually see it happening. And I don't know if that ever happens in the UK with streaming and whatever, but, in, but here it's like a significant enough like lag in what I'm seeing live and what I'm actually being notified of on Twitter. So it's, I don't know, I like having the alerts up. That's one downside to it. And so far I've just been too lazy to change it, but it's, it's kind of sucked a little bit out of the, a little bit of joy out of watching the game. So kind of a funny thing. All right, funny thing number three, and that is local integration. And that's kind of a weird word to say, but in essence, I'm, I'm interacting with a lot of people that are specifically from Wolverhampton. And it's, it's at the point now where I've interacted with so, with so many people that it seems very normal to me. And like, it's weird because Wolverhampton in a way kind of feels like a second home. 
and I've never even been there before. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's this weird kind of paradox that I'm in that like, I'm a Wolves fan, I'm interacting with a lot of people from Wolverhampton, I've never been there and yet it still feels like I'm there and like things are starting to feel very normal. Like I used to really notice the accent when I was first watching um, Wolves and stuff and now I really don't even notice it anymore. And like, and then I've, I've had like little interactions with people where I've been like invited to things in Wolverhampton and then I have to kind of give them like, oh, I'm actually in the US, sorry, I, I won't be able to attend. So for example, I actually did like a Photoshop job for um, Vicky Wright, um, Billy Wright's daughter. And um, that's one thing I do here. I, I do a lot of photography and Photoshop and um, she had posted on Twitter that she needed some help with a Photoshop project or two. And so I um, was able to help her out with that. And she's like, oh, well, we're having this big party and I would love it if you could come, I'll put you on the VIP list. And she was amazing, so cool, uh, very much rest in peace. I know she has since passed, but um, I, I, it was such a bummer that I couldn't go. It was such a shame that I couldn't attend this thing that I was invited to. And it would have been really cool, but yeah, I'm across the across the pond, wolves across the pond out here. So I I can't quite integrate myself there. Um, that's one thing I'm working on, hoping to hoping to get out there before too long and actually be there in person. But it's weird because it kind of feels like I'm there, even though I'm quite far away. So uh, I guess I'll just put a little plug in for thank you everybody for making me feel so welcome and so at home, even though I'm so far away. <laughs> and I, I know a lot of fans all over the world have had that very same experience. So definitely a cool thing going on for Wolves and Wolverhampton in general. All right, funny thing number two, um, terminology. It's, I don't know why it's been so hard for me. You guys have probably noticed in my videos, I'm very back and forth on the terms that I use, whether it was a soccer game or a football match. Like there's so many differences in the way that Americans talk about sports and people in the UK talk about sports. For example, like one small difference is everyone out there calls it a pitch. Oh, you're down on a pitch. Whereas here we say the field. And I, I, I'm guilty myself of saying, oh, this team versus this club or this squad. Like we don't use those words almost ever describing soccer or football. It's the exact same thing with saying, oh, he's the coach or he's the manager. And like, oh, this is a jersey versus this is a kit. Like there's so many different like little differences and I'm still trying to navigate, okay, when do I use what and am I even saying any of this right? Hopefully everyone out there understands me, but it's been a struggle because <laughs> I mean, this is, it's like almost like learning a new language sort of in a very simple way. Um, yeah, just kind of integrating these new terms into my language has just been much trickier than I thought it was gonna be. I think especially where a lot of my videos are kind of off the cuff it's really easy to slip back into, oh, I'm saying American words, and maybe that's not gonna translate as well for people that are watching over in Wolverhampton. So yeah, it's kind of a specific weird thing that I've had to figure out how to navigate. And that brings me to the funniest thing about being a Wolves fan in the US, and that is I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> I, man, if, if you guys knew how hard it was to hear only people in the UK talk about this team and the players, the name of the stadium, everything, all in your very specific accent. And I have to try to say those same words even though I've never heard them in my own accent. That has been an, a, a whole maze to navigate. It's, it has been very, very tricky. Cause like, like Molyneux Stadium, I don't know if I'm saying that right in my own accent because the only thing I hear all day is Molyneux and I, even that I'm probably saying that really bad, but it's it's so tricky to try to like convert it. Okay, well, like what are you guys saying versus how would I say that here? It's, it's quite tricky, especially where the names of all these players are coming from all different parts of the world. It, and yeah, it's it's very tricky to have to listen to it in your accent all day and I don't know how to say it in my own accent. So it, yeah, that has been crazy. So you may notice that my pronunciation is all over the place. 
and I, it's one thing that I'm very much trying to figure out and get consistent. And one thing that's also crazy is you have names like Cunha. A lot of people will say Kuna. I don't know which one's right because I've heard it both ways a hundred times from different people. So yeah, it's, it's really tricky to try to stay on top of all this stuff. So um, yeah, I appreciate everyone being very patient with me. I haven't had anyone saying, saying anything about it yet that I need to, oh, change your pronunciation. You're not saying that right. But yeah, no, everyone's been very patient. I appreciate it. I, I'm still trying to figure out which is which and no one says it the same. So yeah, I, but for me, that, that has been by far the funniest thing about being a Wolves fan here in the States, just trying to work out those darn pronunciations. So I'll get on it. I'll try to get it more consistent. Thanks again for your patience. And that brings us to the very end of this oddly specific list. <laughs> this is probably one of those lists that no one's ever even thought to make before because it's such like a specific niche thing to talk about being a fan of the Wolverhampton Wanderers, but living in the United States. So um, yeah, what did you guys think? Any other um, US fans out there have had funny experiences like mine? Were any of these a surprise to you fans in Wolverhampton? Um, I'd be curious to kind of see what your thoughts were about it as well. So, but yeah, leave me some comments down below with your thoughts about the video and any other funny experiences you guys might have had. So thanks again so much for tuning in and for watching these videos. I have a blast making them, so hopefully they're fun for you as well. And we will see you next time. So thanks a lot.